to talk about some very technical matters to basically introduce you to the enormous complexity of uh, intercity passenger rail systems and high-speed rail. I'm going to introduce you to that complexity through uh, some of the international lenses that, that have a perspective that is not necessarily the same as here in the United States, but will give you a sense of uh, some of the international projects. I'm, my intent in, this, in, this, in these four lectures today is not to make you technical experts, but to introduce you to the technical terms and issues that pertain to uh, running, building, operating uh, these kinds of um, railroad systems. I'm going to move quickly through uh, four presentations, uh, far too quickly, I'm sure, and uh, I will do my best to answer your questions as they come up. And we can uh, start with uh, a presentation about infrastructure for high-speed lines in Japan, and uh, we'll uh, go on from there. So we will now begin. I'm going to start with an introduction, talk about uh, the track structure and how it's maintained, and then we're going to talk about uh, some of the other systems that are used in Japan to assure continued operations and to mitigate against any particular problems that could arise. Uh, the Shinkansen network in Japan is robust. It has about 1,700 miles of uh, high-speed lines. And in this presentation about Japan, we are talking primarily about classical high-speed trains. Uh, most of these services are run uh, certainly above 150 miles an hour, and many of them are at um, 300 kilometers an hour or 186 miles per hour. Now you can see on the dates of, the ser of these services that uh, Shinkansen service in Japan has been around for quite a long time with the first Tokaido Shinkansen uh, implemented in 1964. And the latest uh, installment of Shinkansen service in, initiated in 2011. So this is a quite a lengthy period of experience in Japan with high-speed rail. Now the facts about, some of the facts about high-speed rail in Japan are uh, it's, in, it's very, very safe. There's been no fatal accidents. Uh, it's uh, very fast with 188 miles an hour. It's very, very punctual enormously reliable. Uh, the, the chart is an average delay time chart, and you can see that uh, delay time averages less than one minute, um, and that's on an annual basis. It's very frequent. The services that have been developed and deployed are um, quite frequent. They're basically always available to uh, a rider and they're very environmentally friendly. Uh, here's a kind of description of the infrastructure. And of course, I, I should remind you that these presentations are available to you uh, so that you can download them, I believe, and, and study them at your leisure. So you have uh, different speeds, different uh, services, and uh, different signal types across these services uh, as, and some of them, uh, the, the differences have to do with when they were implemented. Uh, one of the things that is absolutely avoided is any, any grade crossings with uh, conflicts with uh, highway and, and street traffic. Um, concrete structures are dominant and unusually uh, large percentage of the projects are in tunnel. And that's the, the, uh, the brown maroon line uh, part of the bar on the right side. So you have a lot of tunneling in Japan. Uh, here's uh, differentiation of 
classical ballasted track, which are uh, the kind of track structure we see in the United States primarily, and the growing use of slab track uh, in, in Japan. And you can see that the percentage of ballasted track has been uh, reduced as new projects have been installed. Here are some structures, just some pictures of a of tunnel, a bridge, an earth structure, a viaduct. Uh, the the uh, architecture of these civil works has in, in Japan is uh, uh, relatively simple, uh, relatively elegant, and aesthetically re relatively pleasing. The viaduct design is uh, standard uh, with one, uh, one thing that we yet you need to be aware of, and that is that loading of uh, any structures with high-speed trains moving at 188 or higher miles per hour are unique. Uh, the civil engineering design, uh, design constraints and design concepts are different than normal railroad design. They, are, they take into account the, the very different loading of trains moving um, across these structures at very high speeds. Here's a quick uh, description of uh, Shinkansen Tunnel. On here we can see some slab track installation. To, to make a definition, slab track can be manufactured off-site, installed in pieces on-site. Uh, there is no ballast. The, the track is affixed to concrete slabs, and uh, it's very stable. It's more expensive than uh, traditional ballasted track, but the analysis of life cycle costs demonstrate that it has uh, a financial advantage because of the lower maintenance costs. Uh, so here are some of the design concepts that, that uh, the construction costs would be less than twice as much. Uh, there, it usually is um, less than 150%. Uh, slab track has greater elasticity and lateral and vertical strength than ballasted track. It can be constructed at 200 meters a day or even more. And the track irregu irregularities due to substructure deterioration need to be had great attention to, and they need to be within very narrow limits. So here we have uh, just a, desi a design uh, description of slab track, another picture of it. Uh, the, the issue of track design is very prevalent in Asia, as we'll see uh, later in the uh, presentation about China. Uh, the fastening devices to the slab track are elegant and, and very technically uh, uh, interesting. Here's a picture of uh, a type 8 rail fastener and followed by a description of uh, the, the way the, tra the uh, track slab is installed differently in tunnels and in uh, open sections. Here's a comparison of maintenance work costs showing that uh, slab track is literally one-third the, the maintenance cost of ballasted track. And this is uh, basically the reason why, bal by slab why slab track has become uh, adopted as the primary uh, track structure in Japan and in other places where high-speed rail is installed. So th this just illustrates that after eight, after nine years, the 30 percent higher. Uh, co original cost of slab track crosses the life cycle cost of ballasted track. And this is uh, just one of the potential analyses that demonstrates why slab track is preferred. So here for JR East, one of the, one of the four uh, private uh, railroads that run high-speed rail uh, in Japan, you can see that the percentage of ballasted track is down to 7.9 percent, and there's a uh, great preference for the uh, slab track installation. Another 
issue that gets attention in Japan is ride quality. And there is a series of uh, maintenance inspections to maintain ride quality. And this just sort of a, is a, a ch uh, work chart about how inspections are information is goes to a central server and then planning of the maintenance takes place to to literally maintain a very high quality of ride quality on the track whether it's ballasted or slab track um, we we are in Japan very conscious of ride quality uh, a quality of ride uh, that is um, for those of you who have ridden passenger trains, passenger railroading in the United States, it's, it's uh, quite a number of levels of improvement for the amount of uh, attention we give to ride quality. So there's uh, uh, curves that show the reduction of uh, quality problems over time and the attention to uh, maintaining ride quality. Another area that they measure and then act on is car body oscillation and the acceleration of oscillation so that the tracks, uh, the, the track bed and the interface between wheel and track is given a huge amount of attention to maintain um, in all three dimensions a very high ride quality. In infrastructure maintenance in Japan is a uh, constant uh, item of attention. And in this slide, there's a uh, description of the inspections that take place using a special inspection train every 10 days, looking at uh, vi video and um, other data that is supplied by the test train to uh, determine whether wheel weight and lateral pressure axle box acceleration, the longitudinal leveling of the rail, uh, the uh, catenary irregularities, uh, power collection conditions, and various other things are measured, and maintenance plans are drawn up and, and, and then implemented. Here's a uh, just a time of day description that, which illustrates that uh, the, although the uh, requirements for maintenance are very intense and very specific. They have only six hours uh, in a 24-hour period to conduct their maintenance activities and their inspection activities. Uh, here's an example of the operation control system used in Japan to space the trains, to maintain safe distances, and to uh, operate the uh, complex railroad. And here it shows in, in this the various aspects of uh, operations control, including passenger information, uh, the control of the individual trains, the operations condition descriptions and displays, controlling maintenance work and access to the track, and then um, concern about the operation of the electrification system and various economic, uh, environmental indicators that could have an impact on operations. One of the important things that happen in Japan is the seismic activity. And Japan has, uh, unfortunately, uh, probably more experience with dealing with seismic activity on its railroads, its high-speed trains, than anyone else. So there's a, some of the uh, pictures on the left, the, the Hyogo earthquake and the, some of the concrete uh, damage, the, the, the uh, use of steel jackets to contend with that, uh, changes to their um, methods of sealing, uh, bolting, that have been used to uh, prevent uh, deformation in an earthquake. And a, uh, every time there's an earthquake, as, as uh, you civil engineers know, there's a, another uh, wave detected, another concern to be expressed, and perhaps a 
change in the, in the seismic design criteria. They have a very detailed observation and detection network for earthquakes, and they are able to uh, turn off and uh, put all of the trains into emergency in 2.58 seconds after the uh, uh, detection of, a, of an earthquake. Another area of concern environmentally is uh, snow damage, and when there's heavy snow, uh, they have sprinkler, sprinkler systems, detection equipment in terms of the amount of snowfall, depth meters, shelters where uh, heavy snowfall areas can be protected from, from the snow, and uh, they take, take, take this kind of um, uh, situation very, very seriously. Two other areas that are dealt with in Japan are the crosswinds. Um, because crosswinds can have an impact on uh, train stability, they have an anemometer measurement network. They watch the winds, and they have uh, ways of dealing with high winds, including uh, braking and stopping trains. Noise is a very significant issue in Japan, and they have taken uh, measures uh, with respect to noise propagation, I guess, more than anyone else, than anywhere else in the world. Now, here's a picture of a shed used to reduce pressure waves of train in, coming in and coming out of tunnels. And uh, they have um, used noise barriers on the lines, at the side of the lines, Plus, they have, uh, they have spent a lot of money and have made a lot of changes in the actual design of the cars, uh, power cars, and, and uh, the you know, cars that are occupied by people to reduce the noise that is generated by the catenary system, uh, by the motors, and by uh, just the movement of the trains through the, um, through the air. The Japanese signaling system is uh, designed to reduce human errors, uh, to assure safety by automating the system, and uh, they do not have a, a wayside signal system. Everything is in the cab, and it is all uh, driven by the braking curve. And if, if you look at, on the right, you see the red curve that goes from uh, steady state down to zero. This braking curve is basically the amount of feet that the train needs to uh, go through in order to stop. It's a stopping braking curve. And the goal of the train control system is to space trains such that the following train can stop if the leading train has stopped first. So it's, it's, it, um, it's called moving block and it establishes that train spacing can be as close as the braking curve will allow. And this uh, digital uh, train control has been, uh, is being installed throughout the Japanese uh, high-speed system. The power supply system is uh, 25,000 volts, 50 hertz, or 60 hertz, depending on which portion of the, of the country. The power, uh, power comes in from the, from the electric utility into a substation or is uh, broken down and, and then distributed through the catenary system at the 25 kV, picked up by the train's uh, pantograph and used to operate the train. In some cases, regenerative braking is used to uh, return electricity to the system when, braking, when brakes are applied. So here's a, a diagram of the uh, system from substation into the, into the contact wire. The catenary system is a key technology that needs to be maintained. The tension in the wires need to be maintained. Uh, they have to watch out for sagging in hot, hot weather. They have to deal with vibration. They have to deal with the interface between the pantograph and the catenary and watch for wear on the pantograph and wear on the, on the catenary. 
So there we go. That's a quick precy of uh, the Japanese uh, high-speed 